So we're kind of in an interesting situation right now where aftermarket cards are being priced lower than the reference founders edition of Nvidia's top end models. One of the first of these to hit the market is the EVGA 1070 Superclocked, which sports a factory overclock and a somewhat flashier looking cooler. The last time we had a look at one of EVGA's superclocked cards, we recommended it as the best value for money among the rest of their lineup. But as different as the GeForce 10 series is from its predecessor, is this still the case? Let's dive right in. The Z-Box Magnus EN980 from Zotac is a freaking liquid-cooled mini PC. Holy crap. Check it out in the link in the video description down below. So our new Superclock 1070 is quite a departure from the last generation of EVGA cards. It's ditched the stealthy, mostly black look in favor for a more metallic industrial look on the front face of the new ACX 3.0 cooler. You also get a brushed backplate with the EVGA logo and a backlit panel on the top also featuring the logo, something I personally find a little too in your face and tacky, but Linus and John both actually liked it. So I guess beauty is in the eye of the beholder as always. And speaking of backlighting, there are plenty of white lights on the front of the card, so it might be a good choice if you're rocking a rig with a black, silver, or white theme. There's no RGB, but plain white does work quite well with the industrial aesthetic of the card, and white just kind of generally goes with most themes anyway, so it's probably fine. On the side, you get the standard complement of ports, including dual link DVI, three DisplayPort 1.4 connectors, and an HDMI 2.0 port for 4K at 60 Hz with a supported monitor. Under the hood, the GTX 1070 GPU has a boost clock of 1784 MHz, uh, 100 higher than the reference Founders Edition, but the superclocked still has the same 4 plus 1 power phase design and 8 GB of GDDR5 VRAM. So how much of a difference does the 100 megahertz bump make? Well, unfortunately, not that much of one. We tested it both very high 1440p and then medium 4K settings. And across the board, the Superclock 1070 and the Founders Edition were within one FPS of each other, with the reference card actually winning by one FPS in a couple of tests, probably due to like, I don't know, alignments of the planets or something. The Superclocked only pulled away a bit in Crisis 3 at 4K, where it managed three more frames per second. But of course, a non-reference cooler can often mean better overclocking potential, even with the same power phase design. So we cranked up both our EVGA Superclocked and our Founders Edition 1070s to see if the Superclocked would flex its muscles a little bit more. We were able to achieve a 125 MHz overclock on the Superclocked over the factory overclock, and a 200 MHz overclock on the Founders Edition using both MSI Afterburner and EVGA's Precision X and OC scanner. Keep in mind that because the Superclock had a 100 MHz factory overclock, it was only running 25 MHz faster than the Founders Edition after we finished dialing in all of our settings. Here we saw a bigger jump of 2 to 3 FPS for the EVGA card across the board, but again, it didn't really put any distance between itself and an overclocked Founders Edition. But that isn't to say that the Superclocked isn't better in any way, as the new ACX 3.0 cooler kept the GPU at only 72 degrees Celsius at load when overclocked, a full 10 degrees lower than the Founders Edition, with the ball bearing fans staying quiet as well. Thermal performance is easily this card's strongest selling point. And speaking of selling points, the Superclock 1070 retails for $440. That's only 10 bucks less than the Founders Edition. With other aftermarket designs selling for up to $60 less than that, you're paying a fair bit for the nicer cooler. Yes, those $60 less cards have fairly cheap plastic coolers and stuff, but still, as raw performance and overclocking potential are virtually identical to Nvidia's reference card, that's a little rough. Yes, those plastic cooled cards won't perform quite as well, but still. It's a bit disappointing, as the last superclocked card we reviewed, the EVGA GTX 980 SC, was clearly better out of the box versus the reference card. You can check out our testing for that up here. But that makes it so that I can't really give the Superclock 1070 an enthusiastic recommendation. But the interesting thing here is that it looks like thermal performance may be worth the extra cost over the like, lower end aftermarket cards that we mentioned earlier. 
If you really want that raw overclocking performance over reference though, the For The Win and Classified Editions with their more aggressive power delivery systems should be a lot more interesting. Ting is a mobile carrier that is focused on customer service and customer satisfaction first. Don't speak with a robot, just get put through directly to a real person and pay only what you use. On average, a Ting bill is only $24 a month per device. If you're stuck in a contract and switch to Ting, they will cover 25% of your cancellation fee up to $75. So head over to linus.ting.com and try out their savings calculator to figure out how much you would spend with Ting. When you sign up, you get a $25 service credit or $25 towards a new device. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, like it. If you thought I was hard on it, like it or dislike it. I don't know, you can do whatever you want. It's a free world. You can hit the subscribe button even if you want to, because, you know, eagles and stuff. John's here, so I'm referencing America a lot. I don't know, man. Uh, you can check out our t-shirts in the video description down below. You can check out this video right here, which is on the 1070 original reference Founders Edition review thing. That's, that's what that video is. If you want to buy one of these, cards you can check those out on Amazon they have this one and other 1070s on there and other than that I'll see you next time goodbye